I've had my 2009 Saab 95 Griffin for about eight months now and every single thing on this car is working fine with one exception. Let's look on this left side rear view mirror. I can manually adjust the angle of it. That's fine. Let's put it in the completely wrong position for now. Then I can push the memory button to restore my seat and mirror settings and the mirror will return to normal as I push the button in. So the left side is working as it should, but let's look at it on the right side. I switch to the right mirror and if I again do the manual adjustment, the mirror works. Let's put it all the way up, all the way to the right. And now I press the memory button again. You see, the vertical adjustment works, but the horizontal adjustment is broken. I can still adjust the mirror manually with the buttons, but the memory restore function is not working. Or to be precise, it's working in the vertical but not the horizontal level. This also means that the reverse mirror fold-down feature is not working. You know when I press this button when I'm in reverse gear. So let's try to fold it down. Nothing happens. Now this annoys me slightly. Not that the mirror is broken, but that I didn't find it when purchasing the car. I did check the manual mirror adjustment and found that the electrical mirrors are working. However, I did not test the memory restore function. And therefore I had no idea that it was broken. Luckily though, diagnosing the problem was very easy when I borrowed the Tech2 diagnostic tool. With the Tech2 I was able to check the position sensors of the mirror and saw that it was short-circuited as soon as the mirror moves. There was no short circuit when the mirror wasn't moving and this is good news because it means the wiring is okay. But as soon as I pressed the manual adjustment button, the potentiometer for the horizontal position fell to zero volts. So there's obviously something wrong with the mirror motor. Now the mirror motor has an internal potentiometer and there's nothing you can exchange, so you have to replace the whole motor. Because of this short circuit there was also a fault code stored in the power memory module. So the computer had sensed there was a problem with the potentiometers and therefore turned off the automatic memory restore. So the solution is to replace the whole motor and that's what we're gonna do today. Here is what we're gonna use. This is a mirror from the junkyard, a 2003 Saab 95 in some kind of silver color. The mirror is in surprisingly good shape and it also has power mirrors with the electric memory function. We'll be salvaging the glass, the frame and the motor. So the Saab 95 and the Saab 93, model years 2003 and onward, almost all have the exact same mirror. My 2009 of course has the same mirror as this 2003, but if your Saab 95 is from model years 98 to 2002, it's going to be a different model. Here is how you remove the mirror glass from this newer variant. You fold the mirror all the way forward, you angle the glass as much out as you can, and then inside here you'll see a spring clip. We'll push the two parts together and then the mirror comes out. So the mirror glass is out, now I'm going to remove the connectors for the electric heating. Removing these connectors wasn't too easy, you can't just pull it with the pliers and yank them out because you can actually damage the glass. The connectors don't seem to be very tight and you could just rip them out. So I took some WD-40, I sprayed just very carefully here to loosen up the dirt and the corrosion. Then I used two pair of pliers, one to hold the connector to the glass and one to pull on the cable. And then I go back and forth, try to wiggle it out. And then you can take the cable off. So you don't want to put too much stress on these metal tabs, as I think this could rupture the glass on the other side. I'll now turn the mirror back out again. And remove the cover. There's one, two, and then three and four clips. And they're just plastic, so be careful so you don't break them. Okay, I don't seem to be getting anywhere, but let's try instead to remove the four screws here on the outside. So now the frame seems to be loose. Turn it just halfway. Then we'll see this plastic clip here. I push it out. The 
frame is loose. And now I'll remove the motor. There's three screws. And now I remove the connector. So here is the removed Saab 95 rear view mirror motor. Seems to be in pretty good shape. And here's the frame. Needs a bit of cleaning, but otherwise in good condition. So we're back at the car. Time to install the stuff I talked about. I've angled the mirror forward a bit to get access. I'm actually having the car on the lift right now and the camera and the lift itself is a bit in the way. So I'll try to do this as smoothly as possible. It's a bit of a fiddle to get that round spring off, but the glass is now loose. And again, we carefully remove the cables for the heater circuit. Seems like a pair of fine tipped pliers is very useful for removing the cables. So we can see the collision damage to the mirror itself. It's actually amazing that the glass is intact, but the plastic part here is broken off. Next, we remove the frame with a T10 Torx bit. And the bolt broke. That's weird. Guess we'll be careful with the fourth and final bolt. And that came out cleanly. So four bolts, three of them were really easy to remove and the fourth I just uh, happily used the wrench and it snapped off. Maybe I should have been a bit more careful. But the other three didn't give an indication that there's gonna be a problem here. And now we remove the screws for the motor normal Phillips head screws, long ones, split the connector, just pulls apart and the motor is out and then time for the frame. I think I'll have to bend the mirror backwards again. And there we go, there's also a clip here on the back side as I showed you before. And this is the broken slash ugly and glued frame. As I said, this car has probably been in a collision somehow. I've actually replaced the mirror cover since the previous owner had just glued on the old red cover and that's why you had glue remains on that frame. Now we're gonna inspect the wiring and everything looks fine. So I'm just gonna put back the new mirror glass, the motor and the frame, and it will look better. Yes, I know I haven't painted this mirror cover. Maybe that will go in the future, but for now, it's actually quite hard to tell it's not painted. It's not something that catches your eye since there's plenty of black details on the car. So here's our quote unquote new frame. Make sure all the wires are poking out. and then it snaps back in. This is the replacement motor. Plug in the connector and then get it back into its correct position. Three screws back in. And before I tighten down the motor, I'm gonna tighten down the torque screws for the frame. Okay, make sure we can move the mirror back and forth. Good. I'm not gonna care about the missing fourth screw. It's just my own car, guys. I'm not working for a customer. Maybe some rainy day. I'll get around to fix that. But for now, who cares? So the motor's in and I'm, I'm gonna test its functionality. I'm gonna set the memory to this position then I'm gonna angle it slightly off in both vertical and horizontal, then push the memory recall button and see that it goes back to its original position. 
So we're setting the memory. Memory set. Horizontal movement. Some vertical movement. And then memory recall. And there you go. The mirror is moving back in both directions, which means that the potentiometers and position sensors are working fine. This confirms my repair. I knew there was going to be a fault in the wiring, since we had an intermittent short circuit on the potentiometer. Now all that's left to do is to put back the mirror glass. Hi down there. <laughs> First we attach the heater wires, and they just slide on. Yes, this is a mirror glass that we salvaged and not the mirror glass that was on the car. All right, and supposedly you just push it back on and the clip will snap on. Let's see if this works. Super easy to put back, but I guess that's modern production technology. It's made to be really easy to assemble in the factory, and then they don't care about how difficult it is to remove. So that's it. I'm calling this a repair well done. Thank you very much for watching Trinex 7. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or check out our newly created Saab community Facebook group. I'd ask that if you have car questions, please ask them in this group. And I'll see you guys in the next Saab video. Bye for now.